So I'll quickly talk on the uh, the uh, to finding the inverse. So I have written a dash. So please read it as uh, inverse uh, by using the Gauss elimination uh, process. Uh, so to do this. I will take one a quick example. So let us take um, A into B, like how we did before. Uh, we'll take one matrix here, and we'll see how to bring it and find inverse of that. So let us take this as minus one, two, minus one, and zero, minus one, and two. This is our, uh, consider this is our A matrix. For this A matrix, for the gauss jordan method, uh, we have to uh, concatenate or we have to combine with one similar kind of an identity matrix of uh, same size, that is 3 cross 3 matrix. So here we will add the columns, the extra 3 columns that we will add here. So just understand this process. Don't go in much of a theory. So from this process, we will start this, our uh, gauss elimination process. So let us call this as... Uh, k it means we have combined a k matrix with the columns we call this as e1 e2 and e3 columns that is the identity matrix columns that we have added so now the first term is that we have to remove this minus one so to remove this minus one so what we need to do is that we have to multiply this the first pivot with such a number that it gives this result so what do we need to multiply we will multiply by half uh, so we multiply the row one by half and subtract with the row two, then we get the first row will remain to be as it is. <coughs> I'll just use the different colors. So first row has no change. That is zero minus one zero, one zero zero. Whereas the second row, uh, when you multiply this by half and subtract, I'll left out with minus one. So here I'll get uh, three by two because this is half and then uh, minus half minus uh, two. So I'll get three by two. So then here I will get minus one. This I have to apply for the entire row. So this will become uh, half because I'm subtracting with uh, half here. Yeah. Then uh, Sorry, uh, we are not subtracting, we are adding. So we are adding with the second row here. So uh, so it's uh, 1 and then 0. So then uh, the third row remains to be same because we are not uh, changed anything in the third row. So it remains to be same here, 0, 0, and 1. So I'll just write what we have done here. So here we have multiplied the half of row 1 and then add it with our row 2. So that is what we did. Now we have to eliminate this. Uh, already there is a 0 so no need to eliminate this from this first pivot. So that one step already we have uh, uh, fine. No need to go for that. Now the next step is that oh, sorry my mistake. When we subtract, when we add this, we will get here as 0. Okay, so this we got 0. And here, this uh, uh, the third row 0 is already it is there, so we need not to do. Now, next process is that we have to remove this 1, so this minus 1. So to do that, we will multiply some multiplier for this row 2, for this new row 2, so that it will get this value. And uh, we can, uh, when we add it, so we will uh, get we will get it as 0. So what we need to do is that we multiply 2 by 3 to this row 3, uh, sorry, row 2 and then add with row 3. So first row will remain to be unchanged. So that is, uh, we will get this as 2 minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So then this was there as it is. So there is no change here. So this is 3 by 2 minus 1, half, 1 and 0. So now we will multiply 2 by 3 to row 2 and add with row 3. So what we get here is that 0 and this will become 0 and this will become 4 by 3 and uh, this will become 1 by 3. This is 2 by 3 and then here we will get this as 1. So what we have done is that we have multiply 2 
2 by 3 to row 2 and we added with row 3 so this is what we have done so now it is if you look into the diagonals the diagonals are perfect and below the diagonals all the values are zero so now it is fine so this was the gauze process but uh, gauze, el gauze elimination process but we will not stop here so jordan has added a few more extra steps for this and uh, what are those steps that we will see now what we will do is that we have to make above these diagonal values as zero so we have to make this value as zero this anyway it is zero so no need to do anything and this value we have to make it as zero so we'll go again in the reverse order by adding some value from this row to this row and adding some value uh, some uh, we'll multiply something uh, to this second row we'll add with this so that we can remove this process so then it will eliminate and then we will uh, reach the final results so let's do that here so then what do we do is that uh, we'll multiply 3 by 4 if you see here I uh, will multiply 3 by 4 so this will become 1 so this will become 1 when we add with this second row so this uh, value will become 0 and then uh, the same thing is applicable for the entire row so then what we get is that the first row remains to be unchanged so that I'll write here that is 2 minus 1 0 1 0 0 now the second row will going to be affected so this is 0 so now it is 3 by 2 the diagonal value will remain unchanged so this is 0 then I will get here 3 by 4 then here 3 by 2 then here I will get 3 by 4 and uh, the third row will remain unchanged so that is 0 0 then this is 4 by 3 then here it is 1 by 3 then it is 2 by 3 and then here it is 1 so what we have done is that so we have multiplied uh, 3 by 4 to row 3 and added to row 2 right so this was what we have done now we have to eliminate which one now there is a 0 here now we have to eliminate this one so now we will multiply uh, some value to row 2 and add with row 1 so what do we need to multiply multiply 2 by 3 so that will become 1 and then you add it so then finally we'll get this as this. so the affected row i'll write in red so this will be 2 0 0 so subsequently this will be 3 by 2 this is 1 and this is half when we add it and the row 2 and 3 will remain to be unchanged with respect to previous uh, matrix by 4 3 by so I'll get here 3 by 2 then here I'll get 3 by 4 then this is 0 0 this is 4 by 3 then it is 1 by 3 then it is 2 by 3 then it is 1 okay so we are reached to the final thing now if you look into the diagonals above and below the diagonal, this is our diagonal right so above and below the diagonals it's all zeros so now what we'll do is that since these values we have to bring these values to one to bring these diagonal values to one we'll divide that row by itself of this uh, diagonal component so now if i divide this row with itself uh, with the diagonal component now everything will going to be changed so that's why i will write the entire thing in red so i'll divide this first row by two so i'll get here one zero zero so this uh, if i divide this by two then i'll get here three by four so three by four and here i'll get this as one by two and this here one by four and then this is i now i'll divide this second row by uh, three by two so when i divide this by three by two then i'll here i'll get one so here zero so here i'll get it as one by two so here i'll get one then one by two then third row I'll divide this by 4 by 3 then I'll get here 0 0 1 1 by 4 then 1 by 2 and 3 by 4 so now this is our final answer to read this answer we will leave out this identity matrix so we'll separate this identity matrix and we'll take this right side of this matrix so now this whatever we have written this uh, to the right side of the identity matrix is the inverse of 
this one we are talking about the inverse of this matrix so we have followed a different process to obtain this result that is a gauss jordan elimination process to find the inverse of a so this is how we are going to find the inverse of any of these matrix so hope you have understood this method it's a very interesting one uh, there are quite a few points that we have to note so i'll just three points so we'll save this page So the important points just we will note down here. It follows uh, uh, something called uh, the symmetry uh, tridiagonal and determinant. So let me write here quickly, then we will wind up this session. So K is a symmetric across its main diagonal. So it is so is k inverse i'll write k inverse as k dash so please read it as k inverse and k is tri diagonal diagonal tri diagonal but the k inverse is a dense matrix with no zeros it's a dense matrix with no zeros so there is a another point and third is that the product of pivots is 2 into 3 by 4 into 4 by 3 is equal to 4 this number 4 is actually the determinant of k so that is what it means so if we actually find the determinant with the matrix method then uh, the determinant value would have been 4 so in the previous example what we have done is that so we have taken that 2 3 by 2, we added the product of pivots. If you look into the uh, this pivots, now if you, if I go back and open my last, uh, this thing here, let me save this page. Uh, so now if you see this final result this diagonal uh, before dividing this this diagonal whatever we have 2 3 by 2 and uh, 4 by 3 so that is equal to that will result in 4 so that 4 is nothing but if you see here it is dividing everywhere by 4 so that is a determinant that is 1 by 4 into so the final matrix so if you want to split this term so that is nothing but it is actually 3 uh, uh, then it is uh, 2, 1, 2, 4, this multiplied by 1 by 4. So 1 by 4 is our determinant. So that is what it means. Okay then, uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Join in the next session.